needle. I'm Mia Trotter. Now to Drew with School News. We will begin our news show by introducing you to our new guidance counselor, Sarah Rose. Here's what she had to say. I had a guidance counselor named Mr. Arneson um, in middle school, and he pretty much saved my life in middle school, and ever since then, I wanted to help kids. Um, honestly, I think it's not being able to get to know the kids. As a classroom teacher, you develop a different bond, and it's a lot easier to kind of get to know the student body, and here, like, I have to actively really reach out to try to get to know kids, and so that makes it a little more challenging. Getting to know the kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, again, you know, once you do get to know kids, then you become a really strong support system for them and can help them through some difficult problems that maybe I wouldn't have been able to as a classroom teacher. Absolutely, I think you guys have really awesome teachers and staff here that really just care about you guys and want nothing but the best for your future and are willing to work really hard to make that happen. According to the coordinator of the Trojan Renovations, Bob Sweeney, said Wednesday night at the board meeting, it is unlikely the Trojan Bowl will be finished in time for the Clorinda game due to rain. The October 24th ACT will be held at the middle school. Registration can be found at www.act.org. The sign-up deadline is September 17th. See Ms. Honky in the guidance office for more information. There was an FFA meeting last Wednesday, September 9th at 7.30 a.m. and last night at 6.30 in the auditorium. Anyone interested is allowed to attend the meetings. You are welcome to become a member of FFA as long as you are enrolled in one ag class per year. Students, please make sure you have turned in your signed student handbook and health forms into the office. Senior exit interviews will, be, will begin September 14th. Seniors should check their email for more information or see Ms. Honky in the guidance office. There have been a total of 120 coronavirus cases in Cass County with two deaths. Eight people in Cass County have an active case and the positivity rate is 2.5% with only four new cases as of September 11th, according to the Iowa Department of Public Health. Thanks, Andrew. In football last Friday, the Trojans beat Kemper Catholic with Bodie Johnson scoring the first touchdown of the season. This Friday, varsity will travel to play against Greene County. In volleyball, the varsity team went 0-5 last Saturday at their home tournament. The girls had close matches against Winterset, Underwood, and St. Albert. The JV played on Thursday at home. The cross-country team ran at Clarenda on Tuesday, both teams taking first place. Boys with 42 points and girls with 23. Taylor McCready won with a time of 21.03. Craig Becker also won with a 17.09. The swim team is practicing for their first meet against AL next Tuesday. We're following the CDC guidelines uh, very strictly at practice. So every day to start practice, no one is allowed to go out to practice until they've had their temperature taken. So every kid lines up. We try to keep them six feet apart to social distance, uh, take their temperatures. If they have a fever over 100, we document it and they have to go home for the day. Um, and if they report two of the minor symptoms or one of the major symptoms, we document that as well um, and would send them out from practice. Um, after that, they go and they warm up together. Our warm up takes about two minutes. When we stretch, we line them up the length of the field, um, at the football field, so that they're all six feet apart, roughly. Um, and we're pretty good about reminding them if they're getting too close to spread out. Mm -hmm. um, when we take notes and we huddle up a little bit, we again, we continue to social distance. Uh, and we're trying to break down our practices, coaching staff, so that everything that we do is under 15 minutes. So that way, let's say a kid is only sitting five feet from the kid next to him. Um, we're trying to keep the 15 minute exposure from happening at any point in time. Um, we do allow them to wear masks. Currently, no one is choosing to. Uh, with being outdoors, the CDC isn't quite as aggressive about the mask policy, but students are, are certainly allowed to do that. Um, and then for buses, we are taking multiple buses. Normally we take one bus and pack everyone in. Uh, right now we take two to three buses, depending on how many kids are riding with us. And we alternate their seats so that they're about six feet apart on the bus so that again, that we're able to keep kids uh, away from each other and trying to minimize that exposure time. This week was the first set of auditions for the fall musical. All throughout the week, Ethan Prisman has many types of students coming in to shoot their shot for a spot in this fall's Adams Family Show.
The cast list was posted this Thursday. Here are the Adams Family cast list. Gomez will be played by Nolan Perez. Fester will be Micah Anderson. Pugsley will be played by Henry McCullough. Lucas will be Colton Tasto. Maul will be Alex Sampson. Lurch will be Hunter Wepler. Morticia will be Genevieve Martinez. Wednesday will be Olivia Engler. Alice will be Cameron Church. Grandma will be played by Molly McFadden. The Conquistador will be Katie Rotfus. Cave Woman will be Katie Burge. Saloon Girl will be Nina Welter. And Soldier will be Kylie Polito. Bruceman says there are still rules for non-speaking parts or the chorus if you want to go see him in the music hallway. Both band and choir students are excitedly working towards Allstate. With binders full of music, these artists are practicing as much as they can to sound pitch perfect for their future auditions. Um, my name is Cameron. I am a senior and I have been doing Allstate for three years now. I got recalled last year. That was really fun and quite the experience, but I'm hoping to make it this year, even though it's a little bit different because we're not auditioning in quartets or like groups anymore, it's just solo. The way Prusman put it was we're recording um, videos and sending them in the day of, and we probably won't know until a couple days after. And there's no recalls this year, it's just you make it or you don't. Um, and you're able to, well I, what I like about this is you're able to record it and if you don't like the recording you can do it again. The dates for Allstate aren't for certain to the moment due to COVID, but as soon as we know, we will let you know. The past couple of days in the early mornings of the school day, you can hear our shivering band practicing outside in the cold. They are working still on various music to perform. Over the mutual chorus of teeth chattering, much progress is still being made. But now, due to numerous rainy days, the band will be spread across the auditorium. So feel free to keep an ear out for the lovely music being played outside your classroom windows or even in the comments. And here we have our lunch. On Monday, we have chili crispitos, Tuesday is chicken nuggets, Wednesday is barbecue rib, Thursday is shrimp mates, and Friday is pizza. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Eye of the Needle. Be a winner, AHS!